Shut up and sit down. Hello guys, this is Andy uh, from Big Mac's Workshop. So today I'm painting a storm wall. As you can see, I started with a br uh, black base and uh, as I'm doing a chipping system, I'm starting off with Dark Rust, uh, which is a Vallejo game colour. Now I get a nice solid coat of the Dark Rust over, over all the pieces. And the next layer is Medium Rust, again a Vallejo, uh, Vallejo colour. And, and although I'm using the airbrush, you can do this with the uh, uh, standard brush. You just have to make sure that the paint is extra thin. Now obviously I'm doing it with an airbrush because it's easier. Uh, doing uh, just patchy coats, uh, it doesn't have to be a complete coat, in fact you don't want it to be. Uh, you want just loose patches across and around the, um, the fig, uh, wherever you feel uh, you want it. It doesn't really matter at this stage, just so long as the paint's thin and the layers aren't too thick as well. Once um, this is all dry, I, will, um, I then go over with uh, Vallejo's Light Rust um, again in a very loose sort of pattern making sure that I've got a really interesting colour pattern underneath the uh, starting paintwork. Uh, the reason behind this is obviously rust comes up in different uh, stages and when I've removed some of the paint I don't know where the rust is going to be and what colour is going to be where. So uh, when you actually do do the rusting effects, it's quite interesting because you don't know what colour is going to be there when you, when you actually get to it. So you get a, um, the more shades of browns you get underneath the, uh, the paintwork, the better. Because it makes it more interesting when you get to the uh, later stages. So as is always, uh, typically, particularly bad at it in my, my part, I've uh, managed to uh, have a particularly long section where you don't really need to uh, see everything but there you go uh, at least you get to have a good look at what I've been doing uh, at this point uh, quite clearly and playing with my airbrush because it's not playing very much and it's generally misbehaving as is uh, often the case with airbrushes uh, they definitely have bad attitudes so they tend to just do their own thing at times so here we go we're doing the last shade of um, the airbrush colour now which is a, uh, a yellow rust colour and just going to uh, the top of areas of the rust um, so uh, so you can get a real interesting uh, colour pattern underneath. Once you've got the rust down, uh, most, the first thing you need to do once uh, everything's dry um, is to ensure that you varnish your paintwork. Uh, this prevents the rust from uh, the paint from coming off from underneath uh, once you've actually applied the chipping fluid. So you apply your varnish, um, just a matte will do, you don't have to have anything particularly tough. Uh, once you've uh, given it a good coat, you give it uh, plenty of time to dry and then you apply your um, chipping fluid. For this purpose I use AK Interactive Heavy Chipping and this can be done with hairspray though I prefer the um, chipping fluid. Uh, as it uh, gives you, it, it, it makes the paint come off uh, more. It, the the paint um, sticks, the paint above sticks less to the chipping fluid than it does to um, hairspray. Although hairspray is obviously the cheapest option. So now I'm starting to apply my base coats, which is Vallejo's um, red primer. Um, give it a nice solid coat of this. Uh, this is going to be the base to which I'm working from for my uh, themed uh, signal rally. As uh, you can see in the background, there's the um, torso of it. So you can see the original colour, which is just a good old fashioned signal with blue and white. Uh, as this is a reconditioning video, um, I started off with the blue and white and stripped it down. And now I'm going for a, uh, a red theme because it's a bit more interesting. So for the metal work, uh, for the weapons and the hands and such, I've gone for the Leo's liquid metal, uh, liquid silver. Uh, you have to use surgical spirits with your paintbrush um, to keep uh, your paintbrush moist and uh, yeah, also you need this to clean your paintbrush. Now I will warn you in advance, 
don't put this, uh, this paintbrush in your mouth after you've used surgical spirits on it. The stuff's nasty. It's incredibly uh, highly potent al alcohol. Uh, so it will make you feel pretty crook if you get too much of it in your system. So, take it from me, don't do this at home. As I explained in uh, another part of my, uh, in the later part of my video, this stuff's great. It really does um, run smoothly. Uh, but, it do, but it does need a good wash over the top, otherwise it's very, very vibrant uh, silver. Uh, but it takes a, a non oil, uh, lovely and becomes a very, very um, oily looking uh, metal. Uh, the black wash really does take it down and stops it from being quite so shiny. Um, so it's just a bright steel. But it's a really good colour all around, to be honest. So I'm making sure I'm getting the non-oil all over the place. Uh, it's, a good, um, it's a good thick coat for the non-oil. Uh, making sure that I uh, really bring down that shine. So once I've uh, done all that, I've gone back to the um, body of the, of the storm wall and I'm using um, a recipe what Dodge told me and was told to him by somebody else. So I can't take credit for this recipe, but I'm using the uh, Vallejo Yellow Primer um, just to um, Accentuate the hot spots, uh, much in the same way as I did on the wave serpent, uh, just with more yellow, um, giving myself plenty of um, place to highlight. Now, the reason behind this, it just allows it to go back over with uh, a red, but it really brings out a nice, definite highlight over to, um, with the red work, making it a very vibrant uh, red. Now, the red I'm using, ah, here we are with the torso now, but it's been stripped. The red I'm using is Vallejo Game Air Red. Um, and that just is going on a full coat over the red, over the yellow. Um, and keeping the coats thin, like I said, you can do this with uh, by brush, it's just easier with an airbrush. You can even do it with an aerosol if you really know what you're doing. Um, but I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't try that myself. And uh, it's, it is a very vibrant red. When you, when you actually mix it up, it looks more of a magenta colour. But when sent through, the air, sent through the airbrush, it actually comes up as a nice, rich red um, and picks up the highlights well from the yellow. Now the beauty of doing it with an airbrush is if you feel like you want a higher uh, contrast on some of the higher areas, um, you just need to go over, in this case with the yellow again, so you can take it up an extra level with the uh, red. And if you can keep on doing that uh, as you with the hot spots until they get smaller and smaller, uh, making for a really, really vibrant colour change. I actually did this one extra time over the top of the, uh, the carapace. Uh, with the yellow and then one, one extra shade up with the red just to uh, accentuate the, hot, uh, the uh, highlighted areas but right now I'm actually using Dodge's airbrush for, uh, for a try which was a lovely bit of kit I will say um, and I'm using black now that's just to get into the recesses um, really really uh, adding some colour depth to the shadows uh, which gives you that which allows you to have that really nice sort of blended look what you can get. Um, this can be done with glazing, it's just very time consuming. Obviously with the airbrush, it's just a case of a couple of layers. Once you hit the black, um, after I've done that, I'll go over, the, this is where I'll go over the top with a little bit more yellow, and then add the red over the top of it. This allows me to get that um, sort of faded, blended look what um, you will see on the photo. So, here's a cracking bit of footage of my left hand. I know you can just about see the stone wall in the back, but I do apologise for the uh, awesome camera angle. Um, but you can see what I'm doing now. I'm just uh, I'm going over with the red, over the black end areas. Uh, it really fades out that black and 
gives you a really, really uh, vibrant colour shift between the black and the red, um, making it look really, really interesting. Probably the best way to look at it. It's not a natural colour uh, color shift because normally you don't. You probably go for a brown, but I didn't want that look. I wanted it to be a deliberate black to red shift. Now, uh, because I did this uh, largely with the airbrush on this uh, on this stage, I actually went out and did the white sections deliberately by hand uh, to show you the um, various transitions. Now, thank you for watching this video, guys. I do hope you get to see the second part. Um, if you would like to um, check out more of our videos, check, please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Check us out on Patreon. Uh, every little helps. Um, we're more than happy to do the videos. Just uh, we like the extra support if you can. Thank you very much for watching this, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.